Hi, I'm Alex Renda, and this is our paper, Comparing, Rewinding, and Fine-Tuning in Neural Network Pruning. So to start, what is neural network pruning? Neural network pruning is a popular set of techniques dating back to the 90s, but recently brought back into fashion. Pruning typically starts with a pre-trained neural network and then removes individual connections or entire neurons from the neural network, according to some heuristic, in order to improve computational efficiency. Neural network pruning changes the function represented by the neural net, damaging its accuracy. But so in practice, modern deep neural nets can be pruned by about an order of magnitude without any loss in accuracy. But beyond this point, accuracy does start to suffer. So to recover accuracy, the standard approach is to retrain the network. So all, overall, the typical pruning process looks like this. First, you train the network using some given learning rate schedule. Then you prune the network with some pruning heuristic and then you retrain the unpruned weights of the neural network. And this retraining process is typically called fine-tuning in the literature. So the core components in the pruning framework are training, pruning, and retraining. In this paper, we evaluate different retraining techniques. So as you might imagine, actually instantiating uh, fine-tuning in practice is a huge headache. Uh, practitioners have to decide what learning rate to fine-tune with and then how long to fine-tune for. So the standard practice is to use the last learning rate that was used during the original training phase and then fine tune for approximately a quarter of the original training time. But in reality, this is just a really big hyperparameter search problem. So you could use this standard practice or you could use any other schedule that you want. So in this paper, we investigate alternative retraining techniques for recovering the accuracy of pruned neural networks. We specifically investigate rewinding, which is a recently proposed generalization of the lottery ticket hypothesis by Frankel et al. So rewinding is a technique for finding small subnetworks that can train to the same accuracy as the full network. But in our paper, we investigate rewinding specifically as a retraining technique, comparing it against fine tuning. So when used as a retraining technique, rewinding proceeds as follows. First, you train the network, then again, you prune the network, and then you rewind the weights and the learning rate schedule to their values earlier in training. And then you retrain those pruned and rewound weights using the learning rate schedule from the point um, to which the weights were rewound. So it's uh, important to note this rewinds both the learning rate and the weights. And so we call this weight rewinding. A natural ablation of the weight rewinding algorithm is learning rate rewinding, which is rewinding just the learning rate, but not the weights. And so learning rate rewinding proceeds as follows. Again, first you train the network, and then again, you prune the network. Um, but so this time, you rewind the learning rate schedule to where it was earlier in training, and then you continue to train the prune networks from the end of training using the learning rate schedule from earlier in training. So one way to view learning rate rewinding is just as an automated way of setting hyperparameters for fine-tuning given a point in training to rewind to. So in this paper, we compare rewinding and fine-tuning in neural network pruning. We find that both rewinding techniques outperform fine-tuning without requiring any network-specific hyperparameters. But actually, our results go a little bit beyond that. We find that rewinding can actually achieve the same state-of-the-art accuracy versus sparsity trade-offs as much more complex pruning algorithms, such as ones that require either significant manual hyperparameter tuning or ones that require reinforcement learning to pick pruning heuristics or hyperparameters. So these are pretty strong claims. How do we actually validate them? Let's talk a little bit now about the methodology of our experiments. So the typical pruning process has three steps. First, you train the network, and then you prune the network, and then you retrain the remaining weights, like I've said 100 times already. So we compare rewinding and fine-tuning across different networks and different pruning algorithms to validate that our results hold up consistently and not just in a couple of cherry-picked settings. So first, how do we train the networks? Well, so we just use standard training schedules from the literature for a uh, couple of different networks and data sets. So specifically for image classification, we use a CIFAR-10 ResNet-56 uh, and then an ImageNet ResNet-34 and 50. Uh, and then for machine translation, we use a WMT-16 GNMT. And so these are all uh, standard networks for their respective data sets. And then the implementation and training schedules that we take from the, uh, from the literature each uh, reaches their respective uh, accuracies for their uh, tasks. So once we've trained a network, we have to prune it. So in this presentation, we're only going to have time to look at global magnitude pruning, which is a, uh, it's a technique that prunes the weights in the network with the lowest magnitude, irrespective of, the, of their locations in the network. So basically, it just drops the bottom x percent of weights from the network. And so since this technique uh, prunes individual weights, it's an instance of what we call an unstructured pruning technique. 
So in the paper, we consider techniques that prune larger structures, such as entire convolutional filters, but we're not going to have enough time to get into that in this presentation. So finally, once we've trained and pruned the network, we use each different retraining technique to retrain the pruned network. Each retraining technique has a single hyperparameter that we consider um, that determines the entire behavior of that retraining technique, and that's the number of epochs for which the network is retrained. So for fine tuning, retraining for t epochs means continuing to train the prune network using the weights at the end of training for t more, t more epochs using the last learning rate that was used during the original training. And so this is the standard practice from the literature uh, for fine tuning. For weight rewinding, Retraining for T epochs means rewinding the weights and the learning rate schedule to the values T epochs before the end of training, and then rerunning those last T epochs of training using the pruned and rewound weights and learning rate schedule. For learning rate rewinding, retraining for T epochs means continuing to train the pruned networks uh, using the weights at the end of training, but then the learning rate schedule from the last T epochs of training. And so uh, learning rate rewinding, it uh, retrains using the weights that fine tuning would retrain with, but then the learning rate that weight rewinding would retrain with. So finally, we note that the uh, pruning and retraining process can actually be repeated iteratively, repeatedly pruning and retraining until a desired sparsity or accuracy is reached. And so this typically allows for higher final accuracy at the cost of uh, higher training time. But so when iteratively using weight rewinding, it's important to note that we actually reset the weights to their values during the original training time uh, during the iterative process. So despite iteratively pruning and retraining and pruning and retraining, the weights are always set back to their exact same original values. On the other hand, when, using, when iteratively using fine tuning or learning or rewinding, the weights just keep on moving forward in training. So we'll, we call only doing this sort of prune and retrain process once, we call this one-shot pruning, and that's uh, what we'll be looking at for most of the rest of the presentation. So how do we actually evaluate these different retraining techniques? Well, so the first component is obvious. We just want an accurate network out. And so all else equal, a retraining technique that produces a more accurate network is a better retraining technique, of course. Second, we're interested in how compressed the networks are. Um, so we specifically uh, consider the compression ratio, which is the inverse of the fraction of remaining weights. So a highly pruned network, like the one on the right here, has a high compression ratio. Finally, we're interested in the retraining time, which is how long we have to retrain a network um, to get some given accuracy or compression. So to make this uh, the overall pruning framework a little bit more explicit, so typically practitioners choose how compressed they want the network, um, so they have a target compression ratio, and then how long they're willing to retrain for, so they have some retraining budget. And then the overall pruning procedure spits out a network of some final resulting accuracy. So uh, to make the trade-offs a little bit more clear, so typically, the higher your compression ratio, uh, so the sparser you prune your network, the lower your resultant accuracy. And so this makes sense. I mean, so if you prune all the way down to zero, you have no accuracy. On the other hand, uh, typically, the longer that you retrain for, so the larger retraining budget that you have, uh, the higher accuracy that you get, which, I mean, this also makes sense. You train for longer, you get a better network. So let's talk a little bit about the results of our comparison now. So the first question we want to answer is, how long should we retrain for with each different retraining technique? And how sensitive are the different retraining techniques to this choice? So it's really important to remember here that for rewinding, the retraining time actually determines where to rewind to. Because remember, when you retrain for t-epics with rewinding, you rewind to t-epics before the end of training. So for rewinding, this is actually a really important choice. Uh, it determines the entire behavior of rewinding. And you can't just do something like early stopping, which you might be able to do with standard fine tuning. So let's first just look at this um, uh, about how long to retrain for on just fine tuning on an ImageNet ResNet 50 pruned to about five times compression. So in this plot, the x-axis here is the amount of time that you fine tune the prune network for. And then the y-axis is the resulting loss in accuracy compared to the original full network. So on this plot, up is better. Um, and so my, as you might expect, uh, fine tuning for longer, so going farther to the right on this plot, gives you better accuracy, so farther up. So now here are the results for the rewinding techniques. So note that there's actually a pretty wide range in the middle here, where both rewinding techniques outperform fine tuning. So we call this the rewinding safe zone, and we shade it gray. And so it's worth noting that the zone that have shaded gray in this plot is actually the intersection of the rewinding safe zone across all different networks and compression ratios in the paper. So this is not just for this plot. And 
That's why it doesn't extend all the way to the left, even though both rewinding techniques outperform fine-tuning over here on the left. So it is worth talking a little bit, though, about the region to the left and the right and the right of the rewinding safe zone. So over here to the left, which is retraining for relatively few epics, we do sometimes see weight rewinding get lower accuracy than fine-tuning. Uh, so like I said, not in this particular plot, but in other plots in the paper, we see this. Uh, and so in the paper, we don't actually investigate why this happens, although there probably are some reasonable hypotheses to test for future work. But it is important to note here that in this region, uh, learning rate rewinding never gets lower accuracy than fine-tuning. It always gets the same or higher. Um, and so this is because uh, in this region, uh, which is retraining for relatively few epics and therefore rewinding the learning rate to near the end of training, learning rate rewinding and standard fine-tuning are actually identical. Uh, because learning rate rewinding rewinds learning rate to near the end of training, and fine tuning just uses learning rate from the end of training. And so they both they both have the same starting weights and learning rate, and so they're both identical techniques. So even though this isn't in the rewinding safe zone, this is actually uh, learning rate rewinding always outperforms fine tuning here. On the other hand, to the right over here, which is retraining for many epics, we see weight rewinding just fall off a cliff. And so this is actually due to the phenomenon seen by Frankel et al., who uh, introduced weight rewinding. And so what they saw is that if you rewind the weights to the very beginning of training, um, you actually don't get the same accuracy as uh, the original full network does. You have to rewind the weights uh, a little bit of the way into training. And so over here in the zone on the right of the plot, this is retraining for the full original training time. And so that is rewinding the weights to the very beginning of training. And so we replicate uh, the results of Frankl et al. And so we do show that you actually, you can't do weight rewinding for the full original training time because you can't rewind to the very beginning of training need to rewind at least a little bit of the way into training to get high accuracy. So you can't do weight rewinding uh, for the full original training time, which is why the rewinding safe zone doesn't extend all the way to the right. So this overall actually leads to a pretty simple set of rules to where to rewind to, though. So if you're using learning rate rewinding, you just rewind to the very beginning of training and retrain for the full original training time. And so this is that orange yellow dot on the right side. Uh, and that always does better than fine tuning, and it actually gets the best accuracy of any retraining technique. If you're using weight rewinding, you probably want to rewind to somewhere in the middle of training, uh, so anywhere within the rewinding safe zone, and you'll outperform fine tuning. So the results for all of the other networks and compression ratios look pretty similar to this plot, but so since time is limited, I'm not going to show all of them. But uh, what I've presented here isn't cherry picked at all. It is actually representative of all of the results that we see for all of the networks and compression ratios. And if you don't believe me, well, please check out our paper. Okay, so. Now imagine that you actually have a really, really large budget for retraining, and you're willing to do some hyperparameter search uh, for each technique to pick uh, how long to retrain for to find the very best network that you can at a given compression ratio. So another question we want to answer is, how accurate are the networks produced by each retraining technique at each target compression ratio? So this is a little bit more complicated of a question to answer. So let's start from the uh, same plot as before, again with retraining time on the x-axis and accuracy on the y-axis. And so this is for a single compression ratio. But so what we're interested in here is the best accuracy that you can get at this compression ratio with this retraining technique. So we take the max accuracy along all choices of retraining times on the x-axis. And so this gives us the best achievable accuracy by fine-tuning at a given compression ratio. We can get, then get this for every single compression ratio for every retraining technique. And so here you can see that for a ResNet 50 using unstructured global magnitude pruning, both rewinding techniques get higher accuracy than fine-tuning across all compression ratios. And again, this plot is not cherry-picked. This is representative of all of the plots that we find for all networks in the paper. So putting these results together, what does this all mean? Well, so if all you want is the most accurate pruned network, just rewind the learning rate to the very beginning of training. Uh, and so I didn't show this uh, to simplify a presentation, but again, if you do this iteratively, you get even higher accuracy, as has been reported by many prior papers. So here is the really simple algorithm that falls out of these results, uh, that falls out of learning rate rewinding. So first you train the network, and then you globally prune the bottom 20% of weights in the network. And so this is a hyperparameter from prior work, but that uh, works well across all of the networks that we tested. And then you retrain with learning rate rewinding for the full original training time, and then repeat until your desired sparsity or accuracy is reached. So how well does this technique work? Well, so here's the accuracy that it gets at each compression ratio for a couple of different networks. And here are the state-of-the-art algorithms for pruning each of these networks plotted as black dots. So these state-of-the-art results are much more complicated or hyperparameter intensive, requiring a lot more uh, tuning or reinforcement learning for hyperparameter selection. 
And in contrast, the pruning algorithm that falls out of learning rate rewinding requires just this one hyperparameter, which is how much to prune each pruning iteration. And we chose this as 20% following prior work with no hyperparameter tuning on any of these networks. So this sim simple algorithm gets state-of-the-art accuracy versus compression on all networks with no hyperparameter tuning. So in conclusion, we find that both rewinding techniques, get uh, they outperform fine-tuning without requiring any network-specific hyperparameters. You just rewind to somewhere within the rewinding safe zone, and both rewinding techniques will outperform fine-tuning. But actually, our results go a little bit beyond that. We find that rewinding can achieve the same state-of-the-art accuracy versus sparsity trade-offs as much more complicated algorithms, like ones that require significant manual hyperparameter tuning or ones that require reinforcement learning to pick pruning heuristics. So thanks so much for your time. Uh, I'm really happy to take any questions during the virtual poster session or by email. Thank you.